Good morning. I've decided to make a revision to morning prayer. I'm going to pray, simply pray, uh, and then read the scripture reading set for the day, but we'll not follow the entire pattern of prayer as laid out in the um, Church of England's uh, offices. So let's pray together. Lord, we lift this day before you and ask, Lord, that you will receive us and feed us at the beginning of the day from your holy word. So our first reading is from Psalm 96. It says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are but idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord honour due to his name and bring offerings and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the fields be joyful and all that is in them. Let the trees of the wood show for joy before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth with righteousness. He will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Psalm just declaring why we should praise the Lord. We praise him because he's made the world. We praise him because he has become our God. He is, uh, we praise him and we acknowledge his power and his splendor. We acknowledge that one day he's coming to judge the world and to make everything right. We read to Psalm 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world the world, the earth sees it and trembles. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all people have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship craven images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of hearts. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. Give thanks to his holy name. Again, a psalm just declaring the majesty and authority and power of our God. We bow before him and acknowledge his might. Our Old Testament reading is from Exodus 19. Exodus 19, the people of Israel are in the wilderness and here's what happened to them. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from uh, Rephidim, they entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles', on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Know therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenants, you will be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. 
So Moses came and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to, them, to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud, in order that the people may hear when I speak with you, and so trust you ever after. When Moses had told the words of the people to the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and prepare for the third day, because on the third day the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. You shall set limits for the people all around, saying, Be careful not to go up to the mountain or touch the edge of it. Anyone who touches the mountain shall be put to death, no hand shall touch them, but they shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Whether animal or human being, they shall not live. When the trumpet sounds a lung blast, they may go up on, up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain, he consecrated the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Prepare for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the third day there was thunder and lightning, as well as thick cloud on the mountain, and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Sinai was wrapped in smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the old mountain shook violently. At the, blast of the as the blast of the trumpet blew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in the thunder. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Ma Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to the Lord to look, otherwise many of them will perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, The people are not permitted to come up to Mount Sinai, for you yourself warned us, saying, Set limits around the mountain, and keep it all. The Lord said to him, Go down, and bring, come bringing Aaron with you. But do not let either the priests or the people break through to come up to the Lord, otherwise he will break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them, here in the Old Testament we see the holiness of God. The people weren't allowed to come near to him. They had to keep the limits. They weren't allowed to even enter the, even the, the, the base of the mountain. They had to keep away from the Lord. He was holy. We are not. Only those who he called could enter into his presence. We need today a vision of God's holiness and the great privilege that we have as Christians to be those who are called out of the earth to have fellowship and communion with God. This is not something we should take lightly. Uh, we, we have the privilege to be able to pray every day, to come right into God's holy presence. We do this not because of our righteousness, but because Jesus has called us and redeemed us with his blood and made us pure to come into the presence of the Lord. We give him thanks. A New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 1 and uh, the first 25 verses. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the Lord, I too decided after investigating everything carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Philophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the days of Herod of Judea, there was a priest called Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and to offer incense. 
Now at that time of, of incense offering, the whole assembly of the people were, was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him Joy. John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, even before his birth he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you good news. But no, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realised that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, This is what the Lord has done for me, when he looked favourably upon me and took away the disgrace. I endured among many people. Thank God for the gospel accounts. I like the introduction to Luke's gospel. It talks about uh, that is um, the way that anointing worked. Luke did genuine hard work. He went and spoke to eyewitnesses and recorded as a good historian the events of the life of Jesus. Um, he, he, it wasn't that he dreamed or an angel spoke to him, it was that he did genuine hard work. Those who read this book recognised the power and majesty of the Holy Spirit speaking to them through it. Then we read this story of uh, Zechariah seeing an angel um, be, and receiving this prophecy that he would receive a son who would work for the Lord. The, the prophecy of the birth of John the Baptist and you have to sympathize with Zechariah an old man whose wife was getting on in years suddenly receives this prophecy from the angel that he's to be a father and of course he's shocked and stunned and questions this who wouldn't and yet because of his questioning he's unable to speak that's the sign that was given to him that these things were so until his son was born Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for your word to us today. We thank you for the Psalms that speak of your great majesty and power. Lord, we thank you for the reading of Moses on Mount Sinai, again reminding us of your power and your holiness. And Lord, as we begin to read the Gospel account of how your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, came and drew us to yourself and brought us into your kingdom. Lord, we give you thanks for your mercy to us in bringing us a sinful people into your holy presence. Lord, we pray that as you speak into our lives and as you give us promises that we will be faithful to believe them. Uh, Lord, sometimes when you promise to bless us, when you promise your blessing in our life, we find it hard to believe. Lord, we pray that you will give us faith to receive your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together, the, using the words that Jesus gave to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I trust the Lord will bless you today, that you will know his power and his peace. Amen.